Gewalt. This is log to the base b of both sides. So then this is log to the base b of x equals log to the base a of x times log to the base b of a. You get precisely that. So that's a quick reminder of what we all know. Definition. The entropy of x and y, well, xy is simply another random variable taking values, of vector values, if you will, a pair. So uh, that's just the same definition, p of xy log p of xy. But now, it's nice to be able to define the conditional entropy. Entropy of y given x. What should that be? Well, for each value of x, I calculate the, the entropy of the conditional probability, p of y given x. And then I average that over x. If I have an experiment uh, indexed by x, and the entropy of the x experiment is h of p of y given x, then I would expect the entropy of the average to be the average of the entropies. I think that's too glib, but that's what we're driving at here. So, by this definition, I mean summation p of x times h of y given x equals little x, which explicitly I mean minus summation of p of xy log p of y given x. And this is over x and y. So it's y given x is this. Now, chain rule. write h of xy equals h of x plus h of y given x. In other words, the entropy of this pair of experiments is the entropy of the first experiment plus the conditional entropy of the second experiment given the first. And the proof is nothing more than p of xy is equal to p of x p of y given x. Why is that a proof? Because when I take logs I get log of this is log of that plus log of that. And then when I take expected values I get expected log of this, that's the entropy of x1, is the expected log of p of x, that's h of x, plus the expected log of this, which I've written by definition, is the entropy of y given x. And so we also have... 
that 1 through xn is equal to h of x1 plus h of x2 given x1 plus da 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 plus h of xn given x1 up through xn minus 1. Now you can apply it to this problem over here and let y be the length of the sequence x. So let's try that. y equals 1 if x is equal to t and is equal to 0 if x is equal to th or tt. Then we get h of xy is equal to h of x plus h of y given x. Alright. Well, h of x is this that we've already calculated. That's three halves. And if I know x, I know y. y is a deterministic function of it. So the entropy of this pure one atom of mass one here is zero. So big deal. I've written it this way and gotten an answer I got anyway. But I could have written it this way. H of Y plus H of X given Y. Now if you'll notice H of Y is the entropy of just one bit. You know, it's a uh, entropy of a half-half random variable. So that's one. This is one bit. Plus, we have the probability that y equals zero times h of x given y equals zero plus p of y equals 1, h of x given y equals 1. So I'm saying h of x given y is equal to this. I'll say equal. All right, now. This is half, and this is a half. Now, when y equals 1, then the conditional entropy of x is 0. But when x, uh, y equals 0, you see you have two equally likely alternatives. Um, x is when y is 0, x is equal to th or tt with conditional probabilities half a half. So this term becomes half times the entropy of this half half random variable, which is 1. So indeed, I get 3 halves. 1 plus a half. Right. So we notice immediately that <coughs> h of x, y equals h of y, x. The order doesn't matter. So no matter how we apply the chain rule, we get the same answer. But here we got different computations. 
all of the entropy is in X and the conditional entropy is zero. Or we could have done an experiment that gave us a partial answer Y ahead of time, in which case we had one bit that we determined from that, and then another half bit of conditional randomness that we determine from refining the experiment. Question. Uh, you have another uh, combination in X, like X or something? Yeah. Um, would it be more than half? Or is it the yeah. Uh, if I'd included more terms here, yeah, I'd have to do the whole calculation over, but the principle is the same. And, uh, uh -huh. These are. the nice thing is, it doesn't matter which order I applied the chain rule. So, Let's look at an image, for example. Here's the Mona Lisa, highly quantized. And I want to predict the gray level in the next one, given everything I've seen before, and I'm going to do a raster scan. So I have H of X super N, the whole Mona Lisa is summation h of xi given x super i minus 1. That is everything I've seen before. Well, what if I'd enumerated it this way, first here, then here, then here, then here, simply independent. And I get the entropy it's growing fast and uh, the first four terms will contain a lot of entropy and as I start to fill in the missing ones by my enumeration scheme I just have a small addition to the entropy it makes sense if you have all the squares of the Mona Lisa except this one, pretty much you can predict what that one is going to be. If I'd done a raster scan, and that's where I started to say, uh, the answer will, uh, well, I don't know exactly how fast it will go, but the sum of the conditional entropies will be the same, no matter what. So that has implications in image compression. It doesn't matter in which order you you do things. Uh, but if you want, uh, if you only have a few bits to describe the image, you probably want them to be those rather than adjacent. So, we know that H of X given Y is not equal in general to h of y given x. But if we define now i of x, y, definition, mutual information, I of x, y to be 
the original 